Time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. This is Scott Ferguson and my awesome sauce, some sauce friend, Trina Sussman. <laughs> uh, she decided to like reschedule it quickly with me. I was supposed to interview her last week, but uh, <laughs> something happened with my gut bio, something or another, and it kind of set me back. But I'm so blessed to have Trina on. Uh, there's going to be a book giveaway at the end, so you have to listen uh, to the end to get that. And her book absolutely rocks. And Trina, you know, she had a wake-up call when a friend said to her, people pleasers are liars. You know, Trina was 50 years old at the time. And to that point, she felt like her life was a lie. You know, 20 years earlier, Trina was diagnosed with thyroid cancer and knew there was disease, D-I-S-E-A dash E-A-S-E in her mm-hmm. body and was unwilling to express her truth and wasn't free to act and be. When she realized her life was a lie, Trina decided to grow. And Trina Mm -hmm. used her voice to be the CEO of her life. She decided to leave a 30-year marriage, which takes some serious cojones. She started Mm -hmm. on a recovery from people-pleasing and worked through the steps, which are in her book, which we're going to cover briefly over. Mm -hmm. And she shared her her, uh, steps in her journey in that book as well. And I'm so blessed to have somebody that comes from a thriving, growing mindset to come on Time to Shine Mm -hmm. today. And Trina, thanks for coming on. Please introduce yourself to Time to Shine Today podcast, Varsity Squad. But first, what's your favorite color? And why? Hot pink. I wore what? it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. it looks Wearing my favorite rocking. color because I knew I wanted to shine today. And when we look good, we feel good. So <laughs> here we go. <laughs> if I would have known that, I would have rocked my pink too. Because my oh, baby's always man. like, wear pink. You look great. <laughs> so Trina, let's get it, it, what you're comfortable sharing. You know, I'd love to get back to sure. kind of like kind of roots growing up and then into this marriage, leaving it, and then how you're using the lessons learned along the way to help others level up. Sure. Sure. Well, I think it's, it's, you know, we, many of us have grown up in uh, tight religious communities where we're told to kind of fit the mold and, you know, go along to get along. And that's kind of been my story. Um, I grew up in this community, a Mennonite community that was considered if we were all the same, then we would all be one. That was kind of the the Mm. concept. Sameness is oneness. And so I grew up that compliant, good girl and, um, you know, didn't make waves, wanted to, um, you know, be a little bit bold, but there was not a lot of room for that. And so, you know, I, I used that um, desire to, for approval, um, that I was really into as a young girl into a pretty significant athletic career that I took off on. But I, I guess I kind of see that as a, as a positive that I was, um, kind of thirsting for that approval in, in a lot of areas of my life. Um, and I went on the typical path, got married after college and started a family. And as you said, I experienced that midlife crisis first with the, with the cancer diagnosis when I was pregnant with my third child. Um, that was a serious wake up call. I, I was, I was active and athletic and, and to hear that C word cancer was, was really the wake up call. And I realized that that was when I needed to change. And I had thyroid cancer, which obviously is in the throat. So I kind of connected that dis-ease with using my voice and really decided that it was time. It was time to start being more myself. And I think we all suffer when we're not ourselves. And that is really the, the gist of my coaching business is really to help people show up, stop conforming, and to really let their let their light shine, as we're talking about oh today, gosh. time to shine. So it's always clumsy when we change, right? It's always awkward and clumsy to, to <laughs> learn a new dance, but that's what people pleasing is all about. We have to get comfortable with um, being clumsy, awkward, and uncomfortable, and leaving that 30-year-old, 30-year marriage was very, very challenging. Um but I gave in my best shot. It's not what I expected. But, you know, when you start on the path to people pleasing, you really become a truth teller. And I began to really tell the truth to myself. Um, and that was that, you know, this wasn't working for me. And those are hard decisions to make as a people pleaser, because we're not used to valuing our feelings and what we need. So that is my story. And I love to write. And it was through COVID that I had an opportunity to really put my thoughts down on paper and, and get the book published. And I'm, I'm so thrilled that it's helping lots of people um, be more honest. As you said, people pleasers are liars. And that can be, um, mm. that was my wake up call. I know that can sound traumatizing to some people who have experienced trauma and have had to uh, people please because they lived in chaotic homes. And I don't want to dismiss that. Um, yeah. But for me, that was my wake up call when I realized that I really wasn't living an honest life. Uh, yeah, I guess interview is done then. 
No, I'm just kidding. No, this, <laughs> we've got a lot to un, un, unpack here because, you know, I'm a big believer, even with my coaching clients, that when you start with them, and I'm sure you see this, that it, it's messy at first or hard at first, messy in the middle, and then it's beautiful at the end, right, when we yes. get them in there. And that's exactly kind of what you went through, uh, which is beautiful. Let me ask you, when you kind of stepped out on your own, you stopped the ple people pleasing, became authentic, became yourself. What was your, because of your midnight um, past, like what was the family's views and feelings towards you, if you don't mind sharing? <laughs> I heard that giggle. You know, <laughs> I, I know well, coming. nobody, no one yeah. wants us to change. I always give the analogy of, you know, I had four kids and the, yeah. the mobile over the baby's crib, you know, if you, if you ding one of those little yeah. animals or whatever, the whole thing moves. And so when I, when I start to change, of course, that just makes everybody mixes things up and, and nobody likes change. And, and um, of course there's, there's been some feedback even about my book, um, mm. you know, and, and that's, I guess the hardest part of this journey for me, I thought I was over people pleasing. Then I bring, come out a book and I'm like, wait, no, I still have to work at some of this stuff because sure. we still, it's human to want approval. I yeah. have to just manage that with, with my truth and, and recognize that I'm maybe am different than my family and neither one is bad or good or right or wrong. It just, okay. it just, it just is. And so let me ask you something with that. You know, I, I, an analogy I use is crabs in a bucket. I'm sure you've heard this one where you're climbing out and they, they really pull you back to safety. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you think that that came from love or more, uh, more of a, a, oh my gosh, we might lose Trina. Yeah. I mean, I had a, a, a family member initially say, you know, a, a fear that I was going to go too far over there. <laughs> okay. Okay. Don't go too far over there. So right. yeah, that idea of come okay. back, we don't, we're afraid that you're going to go too far and, and, you know, too far is, is uh, not sure what that meant, but I, no, I yeah, understand. we're afraid we're going to lose you. We're afraid that you're going to, you know, go too far from the fold, sure. so to speak. Don't what's be your, too much of a wild horse. <laughs> exactly. What's your sticky note? Come, Cause a lot of times, we, we we're making that change. We're kind of going through things. There's so much pain that we're moving away from, but there was still comfort there as well. But you know, some of people put a sticky note on stuff to remember things. What's your reminder mm. to yourself to mm. stay true, stay authentic? I have, I'm a quote junkie. Love um, it. Me too. <laughs> I'm a quote yeah. junkie. Now I can't even think of, of one. Um, oh my goodness. You're catching me off guard here. Um, the one thing that I just, you know, we, one of the things that I started with was disappoint one person a day. Thank you. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. That is baller. And if that I is. don't disappoint them, then I'm disappointing myself. Yes. Oh my God, Trina. That's badass. Excuse my language. That is amazing. Like, <laughs> do you know my subtitle to my book before this? You know, twelve steps was people pleasing to badassery. So, right. you call that a badass? <laughs> that yeah, that's freaking awesome, man. Because you know what? I was kind of the same way in a sense. Because because people that know my story, they're like, I wanted to fit in so bad for myself yeah. that I would do yes. stuff. And my mentors would pull me aside and he's like, "Man, you need to make New Year's resolutions." that lasts forever. So I do two every year since 2009, right? I, I say one, make someone smile every single day. Boom, mm. right? I win. So you got a little grin there. Nice, two, I did. <laughs> two, unless I've hurt you, disrespected you, or stole from you, I give zero, you know, what's what you think about me. Once mm. I learn to live by that, then, because, you know, I mean, forgiveness to me is it, just giving up the hope of a better past, right? So that it's gone. Like I can forgive people and not and love them from afar. Right. right but I just right. can't have that energy in my exactly. life. And yes. love that. So I have to ask you this because there's a lot of this that goes into your story. Um, and Scott, we might go a little longer because this is freaking awesome. Um, mm -hmm. What is your, what, what would be your definition of like responsibility? Cause you had to take a lot of it during this time. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think responsibility is? And I ask coaches this, that I respect, you know, like, mm. what do you feel if you had to speak it out, your definition of responsibility? You may have heard this, but I, I, I like it where they break down the word into respondability, your ability to respond. Boom. To... I thought, <laughs> on stage, I have, I was hoping you, you are a sister from another mister because on stage, <laughs> I speak that that's one of my speaking points. Responsibility oh, really? is the ability to respond. 
Yes. Oh, yeah. Heard it from Rod Harrison back in 09. I don't even know who I heard it from, but like I said, I'm yeah. a book junkie and I pick those things up. That's and, beautiful. Yeah. And how you. we respond to life. And that yes. is, you know, not react. The respond. biggest thing to yeah. people pleasing is like, I have to take responsibility for my life. And I, Love you it. know, we, we, we can't be living somebody else's life. We're best friends. That's all there is to it now. <laughs> hey, let me. Let me ask some, so you you work a lot, which we talked off, Mike. You work a lot of, with one on one. That's fantastic, mm-hmm. just like I do. Mm-hmm. I have another coach squad that I can pick her brain here. This is this fantastic. When you're maybe in that discovery period, seeing if you're the right coach, right horse for the course, I like to call it, the right coach for mm-hmm. them. You're kind of talking. Is there any secret sauce that you might use if you don't mind sharing to maybe help them, like kind of identify their main blind spot? You know, I listen for what they find frustrating. Dude, I'm going to cut you off right here because you just did it. You went silent. You went thinking. That's the best thing a coach can do is just listen. But anyways, go ahead. (laughs) This is awesome. This is so fun. Yeah, no, I think just, you know, listening for what they find distressing about others. I know I'm doing the hard look at myself at at this stage in my life and, and people in my life that that. Um, I struggle with getting along with and, yeah. and also sign, seeing if there's any connection in myself that may be a reflection of that as well. Um, I, I, I can't say specifically that I have a, a, a process in helping them do that other than just a lot of asking questions sure. and looking at what's, what's their triggers are. And listening with your neck that I can just see you doing that, not just the words, but listening, really leaning in. And hearing that, so how hard is it for someone like you in your past? And this is not derogatory at all, but how hard is it for someone like you to not get emotionally involved, not with the person, but with the person's story? Because you're trying to move them into a better mm. place in life and not, you know, people please or really, you know, level up and become independent on their own. How, how hard is that for you to not get stuck in someone's story a little bit? <laughs> Yes, I'm always putting that line of protection of me because I'm a very empathetic, sensitive person. So, and I want so badly for people to grow. I mean, you know, as you as a grower as well, you know, you're always, you always see the best in them and can see their potential. And you, you know, that it's a hard journey, but you know that you're going to be there to support them along the way. Because as, as we know, as coaches, we, we've done a lot of hard work. Um, We've done, we've done the work and we know what it takes. And so we can be that guide gently nudging prodding <laughs> sometimes pulling along oh yeah oh yeah I mean, so maybe if you're still in that discovery period and, and you're and you're kind of like working through and it kind of a get to know them and really setting an agenda with them is there excuse me is there any good question that you wish they would ask you but never do mm. I think, yeah, I, I think for me, the big question that I would like them to ask me is is how I emotionally regulate during this intense period of growth that people go through in order to emerge from people pleasing because they're, you know, it's all about managing our fears and managing wow. our anxiety um, because we are so uncomfortable with that anxiety of, or that uncomfortableness when we know that people are upset with us, don't like us. Sure. And, and yeah. that is the hard work of this is to really, you know, soothe ourselves, so to speak. Right. In this process. It's beautiful. I, that, I couldn't have said it even better, you know, emotionally regulate through intense growth. That's, that, that, that's pretty solid. Like, how can you do that as a coach and do my, man, that's, that's beautiful. So let me ask you, have you seen the movie Back to the Future? Long time ago. Okay. Can you believe it's coming up on 40 years? Like, oh, really? Like 85, <laughs> it came out, right? So let's get in that DeLorean with Marty McFly. You know, Michael J. Fox played him, right? Let's mm-hmm. get in that DeLorean with Marty McFly. Let's go back to the double deuce, the 22-year-old uh, Trina. I don't mm. know if it was Stutzman at the time. Let's just say 22-year-old Trina. Mm. What kind of knowledge nuggets, we call them here at Time to Shine today, what kind of knowledge nuggets might you drop on her? Not so much change anything, because I mean, yeah, you wouldn't like the cancer and in, right, in the divorce right. and stuff like that, but what would what you drop on her to maybe help her shorten a learning curve, level up maybe just a little bit quicker? Mm. I think taking a hard look at your beliefs. Mm. I think all of our success and our our work comes from our beliefs, and I and as a people pleaser, 
you know, we're constantly this chameleon blending, you know, changing, um, molding into what other people want. And we don't really know what we think and feel. And as a 22 mm. year old, you know, I was kind of this chameleon and not really knowing what I thought and felt and, and um, things. So I would probably um, get clear early on about what, what are my values and what are my beliefs and um, my actions and life would flow from that That's in a, in a, Trina. In a That's better so way. <laughs> That's so good. So then how does Trina want her dash remembered there? That little line between your incarnation date mm. and your expiration date, your life date and death. Date. Hopefully it's way down the line. I mean, you already kicked mm. the C's ass, right? But like, right. <laughs> let's, let's keep moving forward. Like, how does Trina want her dash remembered? What came to mind was just she lived fully. She lived with full expression, full energy, full, full on, full out, full on. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever that looks like, but yeah, just and, fully. With wow. my arms open, that was kind of a theme for me for a long time of this yeah. freedom of just I, I like you said, you've surrendered to what people might think and you just are okay with being who you're meant to be and letting your light shine and you're shining that light on others so they can too it's like you're you're, you're literally planting trees you're never going to sit in the shade on. i, I love i've it, heard you say that before yeah. and that was one yeah, of my I favorite know. quotes I'd too very <laughs> sparsely say it because this actually said to me by the person that kind of wrote it you know and mm. it's like um at an event i was speaking and it was and it, that just really set me over the top with uh with some some stuff so that that that's fantastic so what is Trina's then definition of a life well lived? She loved freely. Yeah, it kind of goes back to your dash. You know, you know, she loved freely. She she was able to receive and give love freely. And I, yeah, and I think that's a full life when you... Um, you know, this this love for ourselves, you know, pours over into yeah. people that we encounter and meet. And, you know, I've had some pushback that, you know, I'm teaching selfishness with people pleasing. That's not mm. true. No, man. I, I, I ask <laughs> I'm teaching to... a self. <laughs> yeah. Having a self. Yeah. I, I ask people to go to the dictionary and read selfishness to me. It, nothing about it is derogatory. You right. know what I'm saying? And and I think that people are not that are not trying to level up to themselves are sinning. And I'm not meaning that in a religious kind of tone. Sinning, you know, the re root word of sinning comes from Greek, which means sinning, which means missing the mark. I think mm. we're little legitly sinning if we're not really growing to the utmost. I mean, a dog, a cat, an animal can only live and, and evolve this so much. Well, we can evolve this so much more and give so much more back. That's beautiful. Right. So then what do you think people misunderstand the most about you? I would say right now with, you mentioned family and what they misunderstand is that my sensitive side is my, is my superpower. And, um, you know, there's been some some thoughts that maybe I I feel too much, and I I maybe over journal, and I and but but my sensitive side is is really my superpower, which which is the, part of the intuitiveness that I that is my gift in coaching. Love that, love it. And do you find yourself as, as you're making the transformation, you help others make transformation? Do you ever find yourself falling into an imposter syndrome? Of course. <laughs> okay. Let me ask you, so how, how do you get past that in a sense? I try to use my sense of humor. Um, I try to acknowledge that, you know, everybody's trying to do their best, right? Yeah. We're all just trying to do our best. Yeah. And, you know, everybody has different life experiences. And, um, you know, there's no amount of credentials behind their name that can make us feel worthy enough i think that really comes from from That's internally beautiful. yeah you know believing that what we have to offer the world is is unique and right. and it comes from our life experiences so no nobody no two people are the same in that so i don't need to pretend to be anybody else love it love it so if i was at a networking event out pressing flash meeting people 
whatnot, and you know, doing what God gave me two ears and one mouth for and listening for something. What might someone say that would make them a good referral for you, Trina? A good referral is is the people pleaser that really wants to live a fuller, bigger life, but feels constrained by, you know, their lack of of confidence, lack of over, you know, not lack, but their overwhelmness, their unhappiness. Wow. Somebody who is just in that transition of like maybe their kids are gone and they just they're not sure what to do next. Um, they're in that midlife unraveling where they're really asking themselves some tough questions. What's yeah. what's next for me? Love it. I love it. How about three things that Trina can't live without? And, and I don't want to hear air and water and food. Like, <laughs> give me three things, you know, and they could be a noun. It could be person, place or thing, you know, mm. like name three things that Trina can't live without. Well, f- yeah, relationships, the the deep, Community, deep kind of. Yeah. The yeah. deep, the deep connected, intimate relationships that I'm finally forming now that I've done people pleasing. Um, a blank page because I'm a writer. I've been writing my entire life. Love it. And nature. That's beautiful. Do you like to get out a little bit? Get out. I like nature? to get out a little bit. <laughs> Is it cold there? I'm just kidding. I'm messing with you. <laughs> I'm in South Florida here in Jupiter, Florida, and it's like, yeah. I got my nice. paddleboard this morning. Nothing on. It was beautiful. Oh, hey, wonderful. Well, something on. But it's just, you know, it's me and my pit bull on there. So, squad, we're going to take my good friend Trina through our leveling up lightning round just as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors and affiliates. Time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. We are back. And Trina, I know we're going to rock some stages one day and be at some book signing events and, and do some, hopefully, some coaching together as well. And we'll maybe talk about some of these questions at length. But if you listen to the show, you have five seconds with no explanations, and they can all be answered that way. I promise you. Okay, you ready to level up? Ready to level up. Do it. What is the best leveling up advice you've ever received? Don't let money hold you back. Ooh, love it. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Yoga. That's beautiful. What kind? I'm breaking my rule here. Vinyasa. Vinyasa, beautiful. I'm an Ashtanga guy. Beautiful. So, I'm walking down the street. You're like, man, Fergie looks like he's a little bit in his doldrums. You know, what book might you hand me outside of yours? What book might you hand me to level up? Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. Isn't that great? I have my freaking penny right here. I have my penny. I have to show you. You have your penny? I have my penny right here. Is it compounding? It's compounding. (laughs) It sits literally on my desk since I've read Olson's book. I love it. Amazing. And I got to yeah, I got to speak with him a, a years ago, and he's just he's a brilliant man. I love it. And he also there's a book of uh, Slight Edge for Teens if you have teens in your oh, life. Oh, really? So, oh, that's yes. he did put that out. Beautiful. That's a great book. What's your most commonly used emoji when you text? Smiley face. Love it. Mm-hmm. Nicknames growing up. Uh cat, because okay. my name is short for Katrina. Oh, really? I didn't uh, know that. Weena, right. also Weena? Trina. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, tall Trina, I'm tall. So, <laughs> me something in the past year, less than a hundred dollars that you think has really improved your life and leveled you up. Insight timer. Love it. What's a hidden talent or superpower that no one knows about about you? I'm a card reader. Nice. Chess checkers or Monopoly? Checkers. Me too. Uh, headline for your life. She danced. I love it. Go to ice cream flavor, Trina. Uh, mint chocolate chip. Right. There's a sandwich called the Katrina. <laughs> Let's build that sandwich for me. Avocado, uh, bean sprouts, a little turkey, little cranberry relish. Ooh. Um, little Swiss cheese Making me hungry. and Dave's bread. Love it. Love it. Favorite, <laughs> favorite charity and or organization you like to give your time or money to? Oh, um, Mennonite Disaster Service. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Expand on that. Mennonite Central Committee. Okay. 
they yeah. they send money around to projects around the world to help people in awesome. disaster relief. That's beautiful. And the last question, you can elaborate on this one, but what is the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? I'm going to go with the 90s. 90s? Awesome. Beautiful. Beautiful. So how can we find you, Trina? You can find me at trinastutzman.com. Spell that for us, please. T-R-I-N-A-S-T-U-T-Z-M-A-N. Beautiful. It's a fantastic site. Lots of good stuff on there as well. And let's dig into your book, 12 Steps to Overcome People Pleasing, One Woman's Journey of Awakening to Find Peace Using Practical Tools to Become Her True Self. Talk to me about this. Yeah, well, I, I would say that I'm I'm a recovering people pleaser. I'm now recovered, I believe. I'm although it's still a journey, but mm-hmm. um, going off the twelve steps uh, in the recovery movement, I decided to do a little spoof on that. So these twelve steps are my testament to how I overcame people pleasing. Um, it is a a book that has a lot of nuggets. Uh, as they say, people pleasers don't have a lot of time. So it's kind of magazine style. Mm-hmm. It starts with a story from my own life, has my journal, some of my journal entries, some poems. It has a freedom toolkit with some simple uh, tools uh, and then has some prompts and reflection questions at the end of each chapter. Oh, so, yes, I would did love to write that during coronavirus or did when did you write that? I just have had it on my laptop. You know how you just, you're that, I'm that writer. I'm that <laughs> quote, quote gatherer. Yeah, and then it was just too. a matter of when I decided to do it. It yeah. just seemed real simple to, to get the steps. I had my publisher help me with the format of it. And it was just a matter of looking at my, my own life, my resources and, and what I already currently had and to, to make it into a book. So it's a dream come true to be a, an author, a published author. And um, this is this month we're celebrating the, a year that it's been out and it's That's been beautiful. doing well. And I'm enjoying Ooh. sharing, spreading the word. So wow. thank you so much for letting me yeah, share it with your community you. and, and having me on your so, show. Congrats on that success. That's beautiful that you got it out there. Especially from somebody that was kind of lack of a better term, silenced throughout life, you know, it, it, yes. it really gets your voice heard and have the cojones to, to really do that. And so squad, the first person that puts people pleasers are liars in anything. I don't care if it's Pinterest, Instagram. I don't care if you text it to us at 561-440-3830. Email it to us. Whoever says people pleasers are liars, I will personally purchase. Actually, let's do four books. Uh, purchase four books uh, that, Trina, if you don't mind, could I send you the money for me? You sign them and Send you just a little bit extra for postage and mail them out to people. Perfect. I would be happy to, of course. And then have, have you mail it out to them. That'd be fantastic. And Trina, do me one last salad and leave us with one last knowledge nugget we can take with us, internalize, and take action on. Tell the truth. Just be mm-hmm. a little bit more honest with safe people in your life. Find those safe people and just be a little bit more honest with them. Wow. That is strong. <laughs> yep. And that can let you have your own individuality, individuality, and let you grow. And squad, we just had a fun conversation with uh, really one of my besties now, you know, Trina, <laughs> you know, that, you know, she came from a community that all the same would be one, you know, she was a compliant, good girl. You know, she faced the big C challenge, you know, the, the cancer challenge, you know, and that really kind of forced her to move into her authenticity, which I think is just a, a, it sucks that she had to go through it, squad, but it's, it's, it's in the end, it's kind of a blessing. You know, she stopped people, people pleasing and became a truth teller and started valuing her feelings. And she wants you to do that too. She reminds us that people pleasers are liars. And that if you are a people pleaser, you maybe try to disappoint one person a day because that's what you know, Trina has a from. She's not disrespecting. She's just, dis- you know, disappointing them. You know, if they they expect her to be somewhere, she might just not be there. You know, if, especially if it's an expectation, you know, she really listens with her clients. So if anyone said they're looking to hire her, which I hope you do, they, they, she listens for those distress points. She really li- leans in with her neck and listens to all the senses, how you're looking. You know, she might look for goosebumps or, or mm-hmm. whatnot. So what's really getting you fired up and then help you work through that challenge, you know, and how you emotionally regulate through intense growth. Ask your coach that. They, you know, coach is not a coach just because, hey, wakes up one day and wants to be a coach. The coach is mm-hmm. there and they had to go through that growth and ask your coach how they emotionally regulated while they were going through that. You know, she mm-hmm. wants you to take a good, hard look at your beliefs, especially if you're younger, but even if you're older, you know, that's where success will come from. 
don't be a chameleon and really try to fit in. Be transparent, be authentic. If you don't know how, do like my good friend Leah Woodford would say and get your asking gear. There's people out there like Trina or myself that will be happy to share knowledge with you. Who will be remembered as someone that lived fully, arms open, freedom. Again, mm -hmm. she planted trees. She's planted trees. She's never going to sit in the shade. Mm -hmm. you know, she is Love somebody it. that lived and loved freely. And just re also remember that your sensitive side can be a superpower. It doesn't make you meek and weak. It can be mm -hmm. a superpower. And if tell the truth with the safe people in your life, that blew me away. That, that, that's that's mm -hmm. fantastic because you know, they're the people that are trying to keep you safe sometimes are holding you back. And mm -hmm. it could be jealousy. It could be they love you too much. They're afraid to lose you. They could be envy or whatnot, but just be authentic, be yourself. That's what my good friend Trina does. She levels up her health. Mm -hmm. She levels up her wealth. She's absolutely beautiful and stunning. Mm -hmm. She's hungry and humble. And she's earned <laughs> a varsity letter here at Time to Shine today. Thank you so much oh, for coming on, Trina. I absolutely you. love your guts. Thank you so much. Thanks, You're Scott. You're welcome. Chat soon. All right.